Hello everyone. Information Box Ticket Lifestyles brings you today Bacteriology Topic on Enterotoxigenic E. coli ETEC. But before starting, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon button so you don't miss any of my videos. Let's begin. Let's get to know about E. coli bacteria. A strain of E. coli is considered to be enterotoxin if it produces at least one enterotoxin from either the heat-stable toxin or the heat-liable toxin groups. Thus, the term enterotoxic genic Escheria coli or ETEC refers to a particular kind of E. coli that generates unique toxins that stimulates the lining of the intestines and cause it to discharge an excessive amount of fluid which results in diarrhea. Enterotoxin E. coli strains are still known to infect newborn animals with a deadly form of diarrheal illnesses which was initially identified as being caused by piglets. Stereotypes 6, 8, 0, 1, 5, 0, 2, 5, 0, 2, 7, 0, 1, 5, 3, 0, 1, 5, 9, and others are frequently linked. As I have given a bit of information about enterotoxin E. coli, let's begin our chapter. Disease caused, of transmission, toxins and pathogenesis, signs, symptoms and complications, Diagnosis, Treatment, and its Prevention Let's begin. How is the disease caused? One of the most frequent causes of bacterial diarrheal disease in developing nations is enterotoxigenic E. coli, which is also responsible for approximately 30% of diarrheal travelers to these nations. In developing nations, the illness is known as traveler's diarrhea and wheeling diarrhea, infate diarrhea. So what is the mode of transmission? Most commonly, the infections are contracted by consuming feces-contaminated food or water. There is no spread from person to person. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Toxins and Pathogenesis Heat-stable and heat-liable enterotoxins mediated by plasmids that promote fluid and electrolyte hypersecretion. The organisms develop their plasmid-encoded enterotoxins and colonize the small intestinal mucosa, resulting in a net secretory condition. Enterotoxins, liable toxins and Stable toxins work together in ETEC strains to produce diarrhea. These strains may express heat-liable toxins exclusively, heat-stable toxins exclusively or both heat-stable and heat-liable toxins. In order to cause disease, bacteria must adhere to the small intestinal epithelium with the help of colonization factors, CF and produce heat-stable and heat-liable enterotoxins. On the transmission plasmid are the genes for enterotoxins and colonization factors encoded. The most prevalent colonization factors are CFA1, CFA2 and CFA4 which are further separated by the antigenic characteristics coli surface antigens. More than coli surface antigens, colonization factors have been identified and the affinity of these factors for host cell receptors determine the host specificity. Enterotoxins produced by these bacteria fall into two categories, heat stable STA and STB and heat liable LT1, LT2. Heat resistant toxins only connected with human sicknesses present in 75 to 80 percent of enterotoxins E. coli either by itself or in combination with heat liable toxins or STA is more frequently linked to severe illnesses than LT only Escheria coli enterotoxin strains. A small monomeric peptide called STA binds to the intestinal epithelia's transmembrane glutelate silase C receptor. This causes a rise in cyclic unosine, 
monophosphate CGMP which triggers fluids hypersecretion and inhibits fluid absorption of the heat liable toxins LT1 is most frequently linked to illnesses in people with 80% structural and functional similarities to chlorella toxins LT1 has 1A subunit and 5 identical B subunits the B subunits bind to the same receptor GM1 ganglocytes as chlorella toxins and other surface glycoproteins on same intestinal epithelial cells. The A component travels across the vacuolar membrane during endocytosis and interacts with the membrane protein Gs to control adenylate silase. The overall upshot of this interaction is a rise in cyclic adenosine monophosphate CAMP levels which leads to increased chloride secretion and reduced salt and chloride absorption. Watery diarrhea is one of these alterations. Prostaglandin secretion and the creation of inflammatory cytokines are also stimulated by toxin exposure leading to further fluid loss. Don't forget to support this channel by subscribing to it. Signs, Symptoms and Complications Within 1-3 to three days of exposure, illnesses sets in with symptoms seldom lasting more than 3 weeks. The identifying signs include bloodless and watery diarrhea, stomach pains, vomiting and nausea are less frequent. Although mortality is higher in those who are undernourished and those who have underlying conditions, especially children and the elderly, the symptoms are comparable to those of chlorella but typically milder. Let's learn how it is diagnosed. For a long time, finding the enterotoxins LT or ST was the only reliable method of finding ETEC. There are commercial immunoassays that can identify heat-stable toxins in clinical samples and cultures. The second is PCR test performed on clinical samples. Let's see how it is treated. Typically, the sickness lasts 3 to 4 days. It could take a week or more for certain infections to go away. The majority of people heal on their own or don't need hospitalization or antibiotics. Prevention Avoiding or properly cooking meals and drinks that can be contaminated with the germ as well as routinely washing your hands with soap might help prevent infection. For travels in developing countries, Escheria coli enterotoxin infection can be prevented by Avoiding foods and beverages that could be contaminated with bacteria. So that's it for today. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel for your support and don't forget to press the bell icon button so you don't miss any of my videos. Thank you so much.